how would you talk to people about how to be a mindful couple? You know, mindfulness is, of course, a, a term that's been thrown around a lot lately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my understanding and my definition of mindfulness is really very simple. It's being present in the mm -hmm. moment. Okay. And so, you know, it's, it's challenging to be present in relationship. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing I like to say, it's one thing to sit, let's say you're a meditator and it's one thing to sit at a wall and manage, watch, watch your breath and follow your thoughts sitting at the wall. It's another thing when you're in relationship to be fully present mm -hmm. with your partner. And it's not easy because we're always thinking about, we're comparing to the past and the future, mm -hmm. where our minds tend to go. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring our mind into the present moment and how do we kind of be attuned with each other in the moment? And so bringing that concept into relationship is what the mindful couple is all about. And it's, in some ways, it's simply paying attention to what's going on mm. with your partner to, as I heard recently, to feel what your partner is feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a big part of the mindfulness practice. And everything that we teach our couples comes down to being mindful. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, part of mindfulness is as well, the ability to take responsibility. Mm. It's the ability to say, you know, this really, this situation that's not going so well, it's really not all about him being wrong, but there's something that I can do at any moment in any situation that can move the situation forward. Mm. And mindfulness to me is just understanding that there's two people at play and I'm one of them. Mm. And by changing my behavior, being more deliberate, being more aware, being more inquisitive and compassionate and, and all those things that um, I can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. And if we both take that attitude, then we have an amazing relationship. Yeah, that's it's, really... Yeah, the book is really filled with mindful things that we can do. Mm -hmm. Then we take responsibility. Each individual taking responsibility, both together, that's where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And you know what's interesting for me, Kate, is that when, when couples quiet down, when they begin to what we call deeply listen to each other, mm -hmm. they learn that technique of how to do that, how not to be reactive, how to contain, how to validate, mm -hmm. how to empathize. When they learn those strategies and things quiet down, we learn how to allow our partner to have a completely different perspective mm -hmm. that is different than ours. You know, the terminology in psychology, we call it differentiation, mm -hmm. being able to know that my partner is a completely different person than I am with their own opinions, their own thoughts, their own reactions. And that's okay, even mm -hmm. if it's completely opposite of how I feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So learning to quiet down so we can allow our difference to, to coexist, our mm -hmm. different perspectives to coexist as part of the mindful practice. Mm -hmm. You're no longer judging. You're no longer judging that person's experience as right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Tendency where our mind tends to go. Mm. So bringing that perspective that's into the couples therapy is mm -hmm. very, very powerful. And mm -hmm. when it happens, it's tangent. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Had so many couples break down and cry, mm -hmm. really cry when they feel that things have quieted down and we're really listening to each other. Yeah. We're each other. I love that. And, and what comes up for me when I hear you both describe the mindful couple is that there's really such a, um, a deep layer of respect that's mm -hmm. necessary for your own process and for your partner's process once you slow down and start noticing it. And when we get distracted with all of the different do's and don'ts and, and lists of the day, we lose track of what's going on and we even stop giving respect to all of the other sort of competing needs that we might have. And so mindfulness really is an opportunity to kind of give respect to everything going on here and here um, and then between the two people. And I feel like when you can be focused and present in the moment, that automatic level of respect that is paid really provides deep attunement mm -hmm. and repair. 
You know, it's so interesting. Like I've always said, like, why don't they teach like people skills in elementary school? Mm -hmm. Why don't they teach? And now we know it as emotional intelligence or mm -hmm. relationship skills. And, you know, I, I think sometimes they do, but basically we, even today, grow up without the knowledge and the understanding and the skills of how to manage through life with ourselves and our own thoughts and our own stories mm -hmm. and then interacting with other people. And so we get into ingrained behaviors that just simply don't work if they're well practiced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mindfulness is like, okay, how do I unpractice what I've practiced that just seems like it's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not. And if we look at our book, and people ask, well, does your book apply to, you know, anybody? And the reality is, I think we determined like 80 or more percent applies to any relationship that you're um, in. That's, wait, any romantic relationship or any relationship? Any Professional, relationship. platonic, familial. Oh, that's great. Uh, well, you think about it, listening, empathy, mm -hmm. repairing conflict, dealing with conflict, avoiding it, mm -hmm. you know, creating connection. Um, all, all those things are just at the heart of being human and being in relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember um, I had a professor and he said, I was getting my master's in industrial organizational psychology. And he said to us at the very beginning of the semester, he said, there's one word that's going to describe all the breakdowns in your work in organizations with leaders. And we're like, what is it? What is it? He says one word, like, what's a word? He says, it's communication. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when couples come in, they're always saying, we have a problem with communication. I'm like, yeah. you do. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. <laughs> we all do. I think the, uh, the word that Debbie used that I like a lot is um, practice. And yeah. I like the word because um, I believe that, you know, just like learning a new language or mm -hmm. learning to play a musical instrument, that relationships take practice if you mm -hmm. want to be good at it. But we don't think about it in those terms. So very few people have set up what I, I would call a relationship practice, mm -hmm. where you have certain rituals or skills that you basically practice with your partner on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So you can get good at it. Yeah. For example, I'll give you one little example, which we love and I love to do with Debbie. I do it almost every day mm -hmm. is we call it the ritual of appreciations. Mm. And so Debbie, I'll, I'll give Debbie one very full appreciation every day but i make it specific to something that she did that made me feel oh. loved oh. and then i deepen it by saying the reason it i appreciate it and mm -hmm. how it made me feel what's then, the most meaningful one there is they're different every they're different day every day every mm -hmm. single day it could be for big things for little things i mean because we do it on such a regular basis mm -hmm. he usually doesn't give one he asks for i usually one. ask one but then i'm, I mean, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest here <laughs> but then i give one right yeah, but then you give one yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm good at asking for what i want yeah which is good it's just a hallmark of a, a good you know a good relationship if you can ask for what you need and you get your needs met right yes yes i don't mind it but i tease him about it a lot <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is a powerful, it's a powerful technique. Mm -hmm. it keeps, you know, it keeps us on our toes, and you know, because the opposite is, in, in our tendency, right, is to look for things that are wrong and point them out. Yeah, or to sit in resentment and and just sort of like yeah. seethe with low grade mm -hmm. disappointment. So I love the practice of focusing on appreciation because it literally shifts your physiology out of that state of being resentful, seething, low energy, and brings you into a more activated, positive, energetic state of, of existing. So it's good for everyone in the coupleship when appreciation is spread around authentically. Yes, authentically. absolutely. John, John Godman talks a lot about that. One of the things mm -hmm. he says is that for every one negative thing mm -hmm. that happens in a relationship, you need six positives mm -hmm. to outweigh the negative because it's yeah. so weighty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we like to keep those positives coming. Mm -hmm. so we feel, I got this from Debbie, from her, her organizational days, Stephen Covey, mm -hmm. the emotional bank account. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep our emotional bank account filled with lots and lots of money, which yes. is, you know, positivity. So yeah. Craig's always saying, he'll do something, he says, like, did that land as a deposit? <laughs> <laughs> That's Stop <awesome>. adding it up. <laughs> 
Well, okay, so for any couples watching this or any singles who one day will be in coupleships and are going to come back and, and reference your book, what's the one takeaway you'd like them to have? There's, there's so many, it's hard yeah. to distill it down, but I, I would say that um, this idea of validation mm -hmm. to me is so powerful. Mm. The idea that you can say to your partner, no matter how you feel about what they're saying, but you do your best to understand their experience and understand their perspective and not make them wrong. Even when you completely disagree, mm -hmm. you feel yourself getting triggered mm -hmm. by what you're saying, that you're able to take a deep breath, allow your partner to complete and finish what they have to say mm -hmm. and just say, okay, I hear you. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. No, um, that's to me so powerful. Yeah. And I think, and the way we teach our couples to do that is we say, you know, I hear what you're saying and what you're saying makes sense. Mm -hmm. What makes yeah. sense is, right. and so then you really feel it. And, and even though I disagree with it, I hear it and it makes sense from yeah. any perspective. I see that. I think I would probably add to that the, um, the, the foundation. I mean, the first time, when somebody comes into our office, they, the first thing they'll get, the first skill, because it's used so often, is what we refer to as, as mirroring. And that's just repeating back what the person's saying. And it's just a, such a foundational skill. Mm -hmm. One that we're not taught, and certainly one that if we know, we don't listen, we don't practice. Yeah. And I taught this in organizations and in company meetings, and it was transformational. And it's just as transformational with couples. And what's interesting is how hard it is to do. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> they get it. They eventually do get it. And it really changes the whole yeah. energy in the conversation. Yeah. I think what what's so key is that once people understand that I can mirror back and I can validate and it actually doesn't change how I feel. Yeah. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to condone it. I don't even have to go along with it. Right. But I can validate it and and I can mirror back. And just that is so grounding for couples. It just is. you know, knowing this doesn't compromise my identity to acknowledge yours. Absolutely. And Perfectly from that said. place, I can really um, express my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And you yeah. can receive it because you're satiated mm -hmm. from being heard. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you both. This was really great. I appreciate having this quick chat to really highlight and augment what is in the blog on modernintimacy.com. And then in your book, can you show everybody your book? Sure. And I'll, I'll be sure to include the information in the bio here, The Mindful Couple. Okay, this is fantastic. Um, I'm going to put links on where to buy it, your website. Is there any anywhere in particular you would direct people if they would like to work with you or they want to reach out and get more information? Well, we, we're ex actually rebranding right now and we're changing our website. We, it's been five years since we updated our website. So mm -hmm. it, the new one is going to be up and running, but the old one is Craig Lambert Therapy. Okay. And the new one is going to be Lambert Couples Therapy. Okay. So awesome. So For now, it's Lambert. <laughs> it's it's uh, Craig Lambert Therapy. Okay. You'll find both Debbie and I there. Okay. It'll be updated in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks, yeah. it'll be updated. Yeah. It always takes longer than the web developers say at the start. I feel your pain on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll be sure to include the links for all of them in, um, yeah. in this video. And thank you both so much. And thank you, Have Kate. a good night. Thanks, you Kate. Too. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.